Hello, welcome back to Teardown. It's, uh, it's been a while, I know, but I've finally had another video idea for this game. If you saw my last video, the one I did on Beam's newest update, you'll know I like getting cinematic footage of games, and as it turns out, you can do that in Teardown as well. So, I guess you could call this a guide, although it's really just an excuse for me to make cinematic things in Teardown, but I'll just be talking about how to do that. Now, the most basic part of the Teardown cinematic experience, as it were, is definitely the screen recorder. Teardown is not really known for being easy on the frame rate, and obviously you don't want to record a bunch of lag like I'm doing here. Instead, you'll want to use the screen recorder. The screen recorder is a built-in mod, and it basically slows down your game and records a lag-free video. Once you're done recording whatever you wanted to record, the escape button ends the recording. It's saved as a collection of pictures in an audio file in the teardown files, and you can use this script, which I believe is built in, but I don't remember, to turn that into a video. For the sake of an example, here's the one that I just recorded. Obviously, you don't want whatever tool you're using visible in the recording, and to hide it, you can use something like this hands mod. It is, however, made redundant by a few of the bomb mods that we'll discuss later. I'm also using this camera mod, which I don't think actually does anything, as well as a second camera mod that does, but I'll use it later in the video. There are the C4s, which let you time explosions. and the deleter, which simply deletes things. The typewriter mod, which I never ended up using for anything else in this video, could be useful for a thumbnail or something. There's also this post-processing mod. I've already used it once to make the intro to this video black and white, and I'll use it again for color grading in the outro. I also have a god mode mod, so I can do this. And a flight mod, so I can do this. Another mod I used in the intro, which you probably didn't notice, was the slow motion mod. You can use it like I'm doing here, as a very heavy effect, but I prefer to use it more subtly. The intro to the video was slowed down to about 70% to make the explosions look better. And yes, if you use slow motion too heavily, it does tend to break the physics a little bit. Anyway, speaking of explosions, I'm using three explosive mods that I'll demo along with the vanilla nitroglycerin that you just saw. Ignore the weird color grading, by the way. I was messing around with it before filming this part and I forgot to change it back. This mod, called Pyromania, isn't very useful because the tool isn't hidden like the other two bomb mods. I don't think I use it at any point in the rest of the video. The cinematic bomb, on the other hand, is a bit too over the top for my taste, and it's also gigantic, way too big to fit in the frame for most shots. The so-called Bay Bomb, however, presumably named after the director, is a lot more to my taste. It does have a tendency to burn down everything around it, though. Both the Bay Bomb and Cinematic Bomb are physical bombs that will explode when damaged, so you can use the C4 mod to trigger them. 
This means that if you use multiple bombs, you can get them to go off in a sequence instead of all at once. So I mentioned a camera mod earlier. That's this mod called Teardown Movie Kit, and it's a bit... odd. Basically, it records a weird 2D animated version of Teardown, but it's not tied to your character, which means you can get some interesting shots that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. Unfortunately, to render itself, it uses a screen recorder with a UI turned on, which does kind of ruin the footage a little bit. It also uses very rudimentary sounds, so while it's definitely an interesting mod, it's not very functional unless you want to crop it and add sounds yourself. It also has the unfortunate combination of fast-forwarding your footage and recording very slowly, so not only will the action of your shot be over very quickly, but you'll stop recording too early when everything stops moving. You can also tell it to render fire and explosions, as well as give it an absolutely hideous post-processing upscaling effect. This awful footage took a full 30 minutes for it to render somehow, and no, I'm not kidding, but it was absolutely worth it due to what happened while recording. Yes, and I have no idea how this happened. The game has decided to turn every single voxel on the map, including my own tools, into glass. Naturally, I decided to do a little bit of photography. You can increase the resolution, apparently, and so the next two things I filmed will look a little nicer. The last thing I'll show you is the advanced camera mod, though I won't explain it in any detail because the mod's workshop page includes a video on how to use it. Basically, it lets you program movements for the camera that are independent of your character, or you can just keep it stationary if you'd like. It's a very useful mod, and so it didn't take me very long to get carried away with it.
If you're wondering why I drive so slow in this scene, it's because it didn't really go so well on the first few tries. Of course, there was also a bit of behind-the-scenes trickery for all of this. In these two shots, for example, I had to cut the roof off of the forklift so it would fit through the tunnel entrance. That's why the second shot is shot so low. In the final shot, meanwhile, I deleted part of the tunnel so I had more options for camera placement. There's no new mods for this cinematic bit, but it took me an entire day to film, so you better believe I'm including it anyway. If you're wondering why the house seems to glow in a few of the exterior shots, that's because I actually used explosives to set it on fire quickly. And yes, if you hadn't already noticed, this shot is filmed underwater. There was also the scene where it started raining, which was really awful to film. I wanted lighting from the fire on the rocks, so I had to place enough planks that they'd burn long enough to do the same shot twice, once when it was dry and once when it was raining. Then I just faded one of them into the other. I'm out of things to talk about though, so uh, for now, thanks for watching and goodbye.